Okay, hi everyone. Hello, I assume you can see my screen. Well, I'm Stefania Economou. I'm a political scientist and I work at web to learn an R&D company in Greece. And today with Katerina Zul from web to learn and Ben Delilia B from BLB, we are going to present hackathons as a manifestation of open innovations uh, for cultural heritage preservation during a conflict. Now, we believe this uh, talk is also a contribution to the No Time to Wait conference because we highlight work that also involves the digital heritage field, digital humanities field, and we also urgently point to the need of immediate action taking uh, amid disruptive and critical social conditions like, like war. Slide. So today we uh, want to critically reflect on participatory and open innovation practices. In our case, we're talking about hackathons that are designed for cultural heritage preservation during an armed conflict. In our case, we are focusing on the current Ukrainian uh, conflict. Now for today's talk, we have set uh, two objectives. The first one is to map and showcase hackathons for Ukrainian cultural heritage. And the second one is to address some open features that come as a result of the hackathons. Now, before going into details about the hackathons, uh, I would like to say that this presentation is, is a result of collaborative and collective efforts that date back since the outbreak of the war in Ukraine. Now, we became extremely interested in understanding how citizens and citizen engagement uh, can be manifested in the cultural heritage preservation fields. Uh, and so we organized a series of events uh, to get more insights. So on June 2022, we organized a webinar on cultural heritage threats in Ukraine and the role of citizen engagement. And we engaged in discussions with experts from the cultural sector from Europe and in Ukraine. Then we participated uh, in a hackathon, the EU Space for U uh, Ukraine Hackathon on July 2022, where we submitted our challenge on Ukrainian culture heritage threats. And I'll say a few more things on this challenge uh, later on. Then on September 2022, we held an online session at the European Conference, uh, where we talk about citizen engagement and academia by focusing on drivers of uh, open innovation in cultural heritage preservation during crisis. We talk about Ukraine, but we also talk about Syria and efforts there by experts and citizen communities to, to help uh, preserve their cultural heritage. Uh, now, with Katerina Zuru, we have also submitted a paper on citizen engagement in cultural heritage preservation in Ukraine, uh, that it has been uh, accepted at the Euromed conference that takes place in Cyprus in November 2022. And our last action so far will be the release of an open access resource on open innovation in Academia Society Cooperation for Ukrainian Cultural Heritage. Uh, this will be an open access resource uh, that will be released in the context of the EU-funded ECOIN project. Now, having said that, let's focus on hackathons. As you may know, hackathons are two or three days events that gather people who work together to provide solutions. And hackathons have been extremely popular lately because uh, they also provide solutions to uh, pressing and difficult social situations. We have experienced this during COVID-19 and or during natural disasters. Now, hackathons are usually preferred because they provide quick, quick problem solving, and they also provide a platform where collaboration, open culture, and transparency can thrive. So why hackathons for cultural heritage? Well, hackathons usually uh, adopt an open and participatory based approach that is very important and critical uh, during difficult social conditions like, like in warfare. And uh, also hackathons provide room for more social actors to be involved. We can see uh, citizens, amateurs, students, but also experts and professionals uh, in being engaged in hackathons. And in this way, we can say that hackathons can empower people in uptaking action also for the cultural heritage field. 
Now, in our spotlight, we will see two hackathons for Ukraine that were running in this semester. Uh, the first one is Hackathon for Ukraine, and the second one is the EU Space for Ukraine Hackathon, in which we were directly involved. Now, Hackathon for Ukraine was organized on March 19, 2022, by programmers and students from the Warsaw University of Technology and Imperial College London. Well, the aim here was to provide digital solutions to support Ukrainian citizens. The connection between cultural heritage preservation and this hackathon can be seen uh, as the second team, uh, the second winning team developed a damage map that allows citizens in Ukraine to monitor damage and heritage, for example, in public buildings. The other hackathon includes a challenge that uses earth observations for Ukrainian cultural heritage. It is the EU Space for Ukraine hackathon that was organized by the European Union Agency for the Space Program. And the goal here was for hackathon teams to use earth observation and space data for humanitarian aid in Ukraine, but also for Ukrainians, uh, re Ukrainian refugees abroad. So in this hackathon, Katerina Zuru, Bendelilia B, Jovanka Kulikoska and myself, we submitted a challenge uh, on cultural heritage under threat in Ukraine. Uh, it was the only challenge of this hackathon that considered cultural heritage as a basic component of humanitarian aid. And our goal was to monitor threats and damages in Ukrainian cultural heritage by using earth observations. Uh, our challenge, was also based on efforts that combine uh, citizens working together with experts on data identification, mapping, analysis, and release of open access results. So we can say that the role of citizen has been uh, fundamental in both data collection in Ukraine and data aggregation and analysis done remotely outside of the country. Uh, as far as technology is concerned, various technologies have been used uh, from sensor-based and sensor-driven data to satellite imagery in an open access form. Uh, we use two types of open data sources in our challenge. The first category, the first type is citizen-generated data, and the second one is sensor-based and satellite data. For the first category, we relied on data that citizens themselves uploaded in a platform uh, created by the Ministry of Culture and Information of Ukraine, where citizens uploaded photographies, photographs of uh, damaged cultural sites in Ukraine. And the second, for the second type of data, we relied on two platforms, Save Ecobot and Echo de Jour, who gather uh, official air quality monitoring uh, data from official air quality monitoring stations in Ukraine, but also for satellite data, we relied on the Copernicus, on the Copernicus service. Now, we have combined these four data sets, and we are currently working on a prototype that, that's under development. to some concluding remarks uh, that we would like uh, to, to mention. Um, uh, uh, there are some open features that we have identified as a, as a consequence of our working, our engagement in hackathons. So we can claim that usually hackathons allow for a provision and the reuse of open data as we have multiple and various citizen-driven data sets that can be combined with automated ones. In our case, we combine citizen-driven data sets with sensor-based data sets and satellite data. And we can also uh, assume that hackathons allow for interoperability. Uh, also in our case, we had, the, we had the opportunity to work on common data spaces and to work on common technical standards through open APIs. Lastly, what we believe is the key takeaway of this talk is that more social actors should be engaged in, in open innovation practices in order to develop products and services for the benefit of cultural heritage, especially when we're talking about cultural heritage under threat as the one currently in, in Ukraine. Of course, uh, we seek to expand our project idea 
So if you think you can contribute to this or you see yourself in this project, feel free to contact us. This is also an overview of ongoing activities. We have a, a, a short video, some open access collection of resources and our presence in, in the conferences. Thank you very much. Open to questions. <laughs>